This video introduces the basic concepts of DNA transfection. The scientists at Miris are truly transfection experts. Our team, which is based in Madison, Wisconsin, has been focused on gene delivery technology since 1995. In addition to technologies for transfection, Miris has made advances in electroporation, which is the application of an electrical pulse to cells in order to deliver DNA, and we also offer products for labeling and visualizing nucleic acids, such as DNA and RNA. First, we will define what transfection is. Transfection is the process of introducing DNA to cells. The word stems from the term infection and means literally to move DNA or other nucleic acids from the outside of the cell across the cell membrane to the inside of the cell. Keep in mind that DNA transfer is a naturally occurring process that is found in many different organisms, whereas transfection is a laboratory technique that mimics the processes of DNA transfer found in nature. Examples of naturally occurring DNA transfer include the fusion of gametes in animal reproduction, infection of cells by viruses, the movement of DNA molecules called plasmids from one bacterial cell to another through a process called conjugation, as well as plant reproduction. Transfections are performed by scientists to deliver DNA to cells growing in the laboratory, but as we just discussed, the technology used to deliver DNA draws on inspiration from other areas of biology. There are a number of different ways that cells can be transfected. Two broad categories of transfection approaches are chemical and mechanical methods. Chemical approaches include the use of calcium phosphate, lipids, polymers, and other chemicals. Mechanical approaches include electroporation, directly injecting cells with DNA, biolistic delivery, or the use of gene guns, as well as methods employing magnetic fields. Let's go over what happens in a chemical transfection. The process of performing a transfection in the lab is very simple. The first step is to combine the DNA that you want to deliver with a transfection reagent which enables uptake of the DNA by the cells. Next, you add this mixture to tissue culture cells. Then, after the cells have taken up the DNA, you can analyze them to see the effect that the DNA has had on them. This slide illustrates what happens in an actual transfection. The three images show cells growing in a tissue culture dish that have been transfected with DNA, which is labeled blue. The gene that was delivered to these cells is a yellow fluorescent protein. As the DNA gets transcribed into RNA and the RNA gets translated into protein, you begin to see the cells glowing yellow at the 8 and 20 hour time points. So that's what happens during a typical DNA transfection. Now why do you need the reagent in the first place? The reason we need transfection reagents is because if you simply add nucleic acids to tissue culture cells, nothing happens. This is because mammalian cell membranes are inherently negatively charged and this causes a repulsion between the negatively charged DNA that you intend to transfect and the negatively charged plasma membrane. So in this process, the role of the reagents, which are typically made up of positively charged chemicals, is to neutralize the negative charge on the DNA. The resulting combination of reagent and DNA is referred to as a transfection complex. This complex has a net positive charge, which enables it to be taken up by cells. Now, imagine a typical transfection where a cell is growing in a tissue culture medium surrounded by transfection complexes. Some of the positively charged complexes will bind to the negatively charged cell membrane. Once bound, the complexes will be taken up into the cell. Once inside the cell, the DNA must also enter the nucleus to be transcribed into RNA. The use of chemical transfection reagents began with calcium phosphate which utilized calcium ions to neutralize the charge on DNA. More modern transfection reagents often use combinations of lipids and polymers, which combine with DNA to form what is called a lipopolyplex. The blending of these different compounds can have synergistic effects that provide higher transfection performance. Now let's discuss an example of how you might use transfection. A popular transfection application in biology research is genome editing. The example we will discuss today is using transfection to correct a disease gene in the genome of a cell. For instance, say you have a cell which has become cancerous due to a particular mutation. 
One of the ways you can correct mutations in genes that lead to disease is to transfect DNA that encodes an enzyme that works like a pair of molecular scissors. Once the molecular scissors enter the cell, they can cleave the disease gene and restore the cell to its normal, healthy state. So of ways you may use transfection that we have discussed include turning genes on or off to study their function within the cell, changing DNA sequences through genome editing, and also researchers use transfection in stem cell research and pharmaceutical companies use transfection in the manufacturing of therapeutic proteins. These are just a few examples of ways in which scientists use transfection in their experiments. There are many more common laboratory experiments that rely on transfection. That concludes our introduction to DNA transfection. If you would like to know more about this technology, please visit our outreach page at www.mirasbio.com outreach.